We continue with solving systems of linear equations and two variables. We've seen the graphing method. We've seen the substitution method. Now we have the addition method. You may be wondering, the substitution method always gets us to an exact answer. Why do we need yet another method? The addition method is going to be the format that we use when we solve systems of linear equations with three or more variables. We don't do that in this course, so this is just foreshadowing for future work. Now, as with the substitution method, we have a checklist that we work through. So this is the type of thing you want to put on a note card. First, we put both our equations in standard form. So it's ax plus by equals c. We line up the x, y, and constant columns. To make future arithmetic easier, and clear out any fractions or decimals. So we just multiply through our equation by whatever it takes to clear things out to get all integers. The important part, I want to multiply our equations through by numbers so that I have either in the x column ax over minus ax or in the y column by over minus by. We add our equations together, so we just go down each column. What comes out is still an equality. Then we'll have three possibilities. Okay, so one of these columns is going to go to zero. Either I could solve for one of the variables, and we'll have a unique solution, or we'll have no solution, a false statement comes out, or we'll have infinitely many solutions if just a true statement comes out with no variables. If we have the case of the unique solution, okay, we solve for that variable, then we just substitute back into one of the original equations. Of course, we finish by checking our work. Now, start slow, work our way up. So I consider the system of linear equations, minus x plus 3y equals 3, 3x plus y equals 1. We're already in standard form. The x's are lined up, the y's are lined up, the constants are lined up. I want to make it so that I have either ax over minus ax or by over minus by. Okay, we have options here. The easiest way to do this would be to multiply this first equation through by a 3. So just remember, this is in parentheses, so I have to put the 3 on each term. So that will give me minus 3x plus 9y equals 9, Okay, and then this just comes down as is. I add down each column, so it's going to give me a 0, 10y, and a 10. So here, I can isolate the y to get y equal to 1. I go back to one of the original equations. So I'll just take the first one, we set y equal to 1, then what comes out is x equals 0. So here we have a unique solution. Okay, the point, 0, 1. Of course, we check our work. So I go back to the original equations. I have 0 plus 3 equals 3. Then here we have 0 plus 1 equals 1. So that checks our work. Okay, if we want another check, we could just graph the lines in the xy plane. Slightly topper, let's consider the system minus 3x plus 2y equals 0, 5x minus 3y equals 1. Here we see both equations are in standard form. The x column, the y column, and the constants are lined up. There are no fractions in our equations. So we go to step 3, which is try to get ax over minus ax or by over minus by. Now here we note it's not going to be enough just to multiply one of the equations by an integer. We're going to have to do both. So the way I'll get that, I can multiply the first equation by 5, the second one by 3, and then the x columns are going to line up the way we want. So I multiply equation 1 through by 5. Okay, so we get a 5 here, 5 here, 5 here. I have minus 15x plus 10y is 0. Second equation I multiply through by a 3. That'll give me 15x minus 9y equals 3. And now we can add down the columns. So I get a 0 plus a y equals 3. So here, we don't even have to solve for anything. We have that y is equal to 3. Now, we go back, put y equals 3 into either equation. So we'll put in the first one. That'll give me x equal to 2. So our solution is 2 comma 3. Of course, we check that in each equation. So I have minus 6 plus 6 is 0. That checks. Then I have 10 minus 9 equals 1, and that checks also. Next possibility, 
Here we'll have no solution. So I'll start off with the equations. x equal to a half y plus 2. 4 thirds x plus 2 thirds y equals 4. Now note, we're not in standard form, and we have fractions. So we need to do a little bit of cleanup before we get to our result. First step, I push the y terms to the other side. So we have x minus a half y equals 2. 4 thirds x minus 2 thirds y equals 4. I clear out the fractions. So I'll multiply equation 1 through by 2. Equation 2, we multiply through by 3. So that'll give us 2x minus y equals 4, and 4x minus 2y equals 12. Okay, so this is starting to look better. Now, I want ax over minus ax, or by over minus by. So I'm going to multiply equation 1 through by a minus 2. That'll give me a minus 4x plus 2y equals a minus 8. Now we can add down to get our 0. In this case, we know we'll lose both variables. So the x's go to 0, the y's go to 0. On the other side, the constants go to a 4. So I have the false statement that 0 is equal to 4, and that's going to imply that we have no solution. Now, the way I can check this, if we go back to the original equations and isolate the y, and okay, it's best to do that here, of the two equations, y equals 2x minus 4, y equals 2x minus 6. Here, we see that these lines have the same slope but different intercepts. So they're going to be parallel lines. So no intersection, which means no solution. For the file example, okay, we check the third possibility, infinitely many solutions. So I consider the system, 16x minus 2y equals 16. 1 24th y plus a third equals 1 third x. So here, our second equation is not in standard form, and it has fractions. Now, to go to standard form, I'm going to push the 1 third x to the other side as a minus 1 third x. The 1 third we push to the right side as a minus 1 third. Then, I want to clear out the denominators. So we'll multiply the second equation by 24. That gives me minus 8x plus y equals minus 8. So both equations are in standard form. I have no fractions. I move to step 3, which is to get either ax over minus ax or by over minus by. To do that, I'll just multiply equation 2 by 2. So that becomes minus 16x plus 2y equals minus 16. Now I can add down each column. When we do that, both of our variables are going to go to 0, but we also have the constant term on the other side going to 0, so I get the true statement 0 equals 0. This will be the case of infinitely many solutions. Now, what this means, if we go back to the original equations, isolate y, in both cases we'll get the line y equals 8x minus 8. So these equations describe the same line, so infinitely many solutions. Just to check, recall if we're asked to list some of these solutions, what do we do? We're just going to pick any x, put it into the equation for the line, that gives a solution. And then we just check our work. So for instance, if I take x equal to 0, that'll give me y equals minus 8. So I have 0 minus 8 as a solution. We check in the original equations. Okay, so what do we have? We have 0 minus 2 times minus 8 is equal to 16. That checks out. Then in the equation with fractions, okay, what do we have? 1 24th times a minus 8 gives me a minus third. Plus a third gives me 0, which is the same as 1 third times 0. So that checks out also. I could take x equal to 1. That'll give me y equals 0 using the equation of the line. So we have the solution 1 comma 0. We check in the original equations. Okay, so we have 16 times 1 minus 0 is 16. That checks. In the equation with fractions, I have 1 24th 0 plus a third is equal to a third times 1, and that also checks.